Ah, the pressure is on and it's spring and a brown unmanicured lawn will make you an outcast in suburbia. Trust me, I know. So we brought in the big guns, Jason Cameron from DIY Networks, Desperate Landscapes, and he's here to give us some landscaping tips that will make you the neighbors, make your neighbors <laughs> green with envy. Okay, that's, well, that's I'm the goal anyway, right? I'm a far cry <laughs> from that right now. Two days ago, I was planting new flowers, looking around the lawn, the back, the front. It's a disaster. Yeah, you were just telling me that, and I know you guys have been dealing with a drought situation. I'm normally up in the northeast, so you right. guys, it's a little different down here as far as what you guys are going through with the drought and everything else, water conservation and all these issues that you deal right. with, but there's always a way to fix it, right? <laughs> there's always something you can do. I, I know you're a little, I can tell you, I can see your frustration <laughs> when you're telling me about your yard. Oh, it's so just so much. Where do we start? <laughs> What's the best thing to start with, your lawn? Your lawn, that's the biggest part of your, of your yard is mm -hmm. your lawn, right? And that's something that, it's a living organism, people have to remember that, right? Because it gets a lot of abuse, it gets a lot of uh, insects, it gets stressed out. Mm -hmm. Throughout the year, so springtime, right? That's the most important feeding time. We say feeding, but we—that's what we mean. You got to feed your lawn. So there's four really important times. It's springtime because that's when it's coming out of dormancy, right? I mean, just like a bear coming right. out of hibernation, they want the first thing they want to do is what? They want to eat. Yeah. It's to prep themselves, give themselves the energy for those strong roots to take care of themselves. Sort of vibrant lawn. So feeding with a good fertilizer and a pre-emergent if you need it, herbicide for something like a um, broadleaf uh, grass or. Uh, uh, a lot of the leaves you see, a lot of the weeds that you see, you want to treat for those if you need to. Mm -hmm. uh, crabgrass is another issue. Uh, early spring. So I usually tell people a good program is to feed your lawn four times a year, right? Not just once. In the spring, late spring, because that's lunchtime for grass. Summer, because they're dealing with all the sun, the drought, the mm -hmm. insects, they're stressed out. I say they, the grass. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then fall. So those are the four important times to really look at your lawn and assess it and see if you need to feed it's it. It's very confusing to know what to buy or what right. to feed it and what this kills that, but it doesn't kill this. And it, it, it's confusing. It is very confusing. There are a lot of things. There are a lot of resources online now that you can find out. It's a very simple uh, matter of just everybody's online now. So you can go on, you can read. Uh, there's different uh, formulas out there that are already done for you that have a feed and a pre-emergent in mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. that you can use. But you have to be careful depending on where you are, whether you're north or you're south, if it's cool grass, hot grass. There's, See what I mean? Yeah, there's different <laughs> things. There is. There is. But the, the most important thing is to understand, to keep it simple, is to feed your lawn. That's the most important thing because your, your lawn, again, is a living organism needs to be fed and to keep it vibrant. And that's the most important thing. If you see weeds, if that's something that you have a problem with, right. then you can assess that. You can find out what that weed is and figure out what you need to kill that particular weed. Uh, so, but just keep taking care of it and feeding it is the most important thing. What about trees? Trees, again, here's the thing about trees, and, and we, in my on, on Desperate Landscapes, we plant trees all the time in homes because homes love to have mature trees, right? It shades you in the, in the summer, it, it, it shades you also in the winter. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's great, it looks amazing. The key is, again, you have to feed your trees too. People don't think about this, right? But when you take a tree out of its natural setting, which is the forest, which it has all this decomposing stuff around it and all this organic material, you put it in a landscape where it's foreign because now it's a manicured lawn, it doesn't have all those things, you have to feed it. So what we do is what's called, we drill holes and we actually fill that with a feed, right? That's the way you can feed your trees because those little roots give it a chance to get those nutrients right. and, and take it into the root system. So feeding your tree is important as well and that's usually done in the fall. What about the pruning? The pruning is important. You want to get rid of the dead branches. You want to get rid of any dead leaves. Uh, a pruned tree is a happy tree. Can we talk about flowers for a second? Because this is the one thing that I actually can do. I mean, I'll have to hire someone to do the lawn and the trees and all that stuff. But for flowers, I'm never quite sure like what to plant in the front of the house. Like when it's when we have these like cold snaps that we've had, mm -hmm. I guess pansies are a good choice because they can withstand some of the cold. Yeah, those are good okay. choices. I think you, you have to keep in mind too when you're outdoors, because again, you're you're in a much different climate than yeah. what I'm used to. So your best the best advice I give anybody is go to your local nursery. Mm -hmm. Your local nursery is the best source because they're gonna tell you what flowers are going to do well outside, what flowers you might need to bring inside mm -hmm. at a certain point, mm -hmm. or what flowers are drought tolerant, what flowers are going to, you know, wh which ones are going to stay vibrant longer. There's so many different types of flowers that by just going to your local nursery and, and getting their input on it, they yeah. will let you know what's going to do best. Basically, Lisa, begonias. Just stick with begonias. 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 We'll sum it up with begonias. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> the one thing year. you can just get to last all summer. They're very hardy, okay. begonias. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. I saw a lady, she I literally brought in a Ziploc baggie 
of all the weeds from her yard and gave it to our local nurser and said, okay, what are all these and what do I need to do with them? And he's like, oh, that's a such and such and now you need to buy, here's what you buy and you buy that and buy that. Yeah. So, uh, and it's funny because I, I'm overwhelmed sometimes with all the different types, you know, because even myself, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm not an expert when it comes to horticulture. So for me, it's like I will often go to the nursery and refresh myself in right. terms of, okay, what, especially in your growing zone, because every zone mm -hmm. is different. Mm -hmm. And There's, if you're sun or shade, that always messes me up with shade. my pots. Yeah. Right. Especially, especially in I, Texas. Mm -hmm. right. and people, so that's intense. why people have problems under trees, right? Yeah. And talking about trees, one of the things that we like to do is create a mulch bed under a tree. And what that does is two things. Number one, it protects the roots, especially surface roots, mm -hmm. uh, which you've probably seen. And it also keeps people from mowing in that area. Mm -hmm. So, and then you can plant flowers in that planting bed mm -hmm. underneath the tree because flowers that do well and maybe in shade, certain plants that do well in shade, low growth. So another way to protect your tree is to do that. And what do you have going on in Dallas right now? We're here uh, on behalf of DIY Network. We're, uh, we're doing some uh, promotional stuff with them. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here, though, because I just came from a cold climate, and it's very nice to be in a warm And, you, and I read climate. you just recently redid your whole landscaping yourself in your uh, own yard, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Finally my own. Finally my own. <laughs> Why I did you bring pictures of that? That's what I want to see. <laughs> uh, didn't they, I thought they had them. Were no, the, I didn't were, bring them? We uh, did. We I'm showed sorry. some video. Was that your place? Did no, you do a new uh, deck Yes, it was. No, it was. See, folks, he actually does his own lawn. I do my own stuff, believe it or not. With the word, ugh. Yeah, I did, did I? Did I say that? I heard Can ugh. you rewind that? <laughs> You're probably ready to get gardening. So uh, if you'd like these tips, again, you can get them at thebroadcasttv.com.